I think that was one of the toughest things when we went to a World Cup, whether it was 2007 or 2009 Euros when we got to the final or 2011, and you land back and you've got to go straight back to work. My earliest football memories um, were playing over the park, playing in the street, really. I grew up in Essex. We lived in a cul-de-sac, jumpers down for goals. Just loved playing. Um, played with the boys, really. It was all boys in my cul-de-sac. They never stopped me in goals. So that tells me I was I was okay at playing. Um, there was one team in the town where we lived, and unfortunately I wasn't allowed to play on that team because I was a girl. Um, but I loved the game, loved playing. Um, Heroes... I didn't really have any, to be honest, because there was no women's football on TV. I didn't really know it existed. Um, I used to love watching Ian Wright um, because he just made the game look fun. Always played with a smile on his face, always had good energy. Um, so he would be someone that I looked up to back in those days. And I fancied myself as a bit of a centre forward back then too. <laughs> to me growing up, the women's game didn't exist. It wasn't visible. Uh, there was no teams junior teams or senior teams where I lived in Essex. I didn't really know anything about it. I just knew that I loved the game. Um, wasn't really until I realized I couldn't play in the boys team that I didn't know I couldn't play. And then we moved um, from Essex to Morden and the Northern Line. Um, and that's when my first real experience of playing organized football happened. Uh, my mum found a team to me, for me to play for. Um, we trained in the local school down the road indoors on a Wednesday night, I believe it was. Um, and it was a boys team. So I was the only girl in that team. And then when I turned up every weekend, I was the only girl in the entire league. So challenged me massively. Um, but at the same time, I think it really helped me get to where I am now. Well, when I was 12, I started playing for Chelsea. Um, I got spotted playing over the park and the manager at the time, who was a volunteer, um, asked me to go and play there. And it wasn't a junior team, it was a senior team. And actually not really allowed to play until you're 14 senior football. So we used to have to change my date of birth on the registration forms. But I was playing with grown women and that had its pluses and its minuses. It was a bit intimidating, but at the same time, always meant I had a lift because um, my mum worked a lot. I couldn't get to the venues that I needed to. So my manager used to take me, all the players used to pick me up. It wasn't until I was kind of 14, 15, and that same manager took me to an England trial when maybe I realized that I had uh, maybe some sort of talent. Um, I just knew I loved playing the game. And I actually failed my first England trial and was told I wasn't good enough. Um, and it wasn't until I got invited back for a second trial that I, I probably didn't even believe in myself. I didn't believe I was good enough, especially in the first one. Second one, I went back and I was like, I don't care attitude. I'm just gonna give it everything. And I got into the England under 16s, started going away on trips and camps, and then got a phone call from Arsenal to go down and visit there and met with Vic Akers at the old stadium, Highbury. And then I walked out of a pair of boots, Nike boots, and it was like Christmas because we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So I walked out of an Arsenal shirt. I was an Arsenal fan. I was at Highbury as an Arsenal fan. And the opportunity to play for them was, was a dream come true because they were the best team in the country. Um, again, another challenge. Um, we didn't get paid, but at that point it was different because I paid to play for Chelsea. And luckily the manager let me kind of play half price, 50% off because we didn't have a lot of money. But Arsenal, it was the first time I didn't have to pay to play. Um, so that was good. And I had an amazing experience there. Vic Akers is a legend of the game. You know, when I went to Arsenal, he just had a real manner about him, real calm. You know, we... We didn't do an awful lot in terms of tactical detail. We used to train in the indoor hall. Um, we used to play five side, six side, or England v Ireland because we have a lot of Irish players then. And we used to set us up. We had the best players. We were always super fit, and we used to dominate games. And he had a big influence on my career because he gave me that opportunity. And I think by me playing for Arsenal, it actually helped me internationally too. He won an incredible amount of trophies. He changed the landscape of women's football. He got us training at the men's training ground. He was ahead of his time, really ahead of his time. And he did all that whilst being the kit man for the first team. So, you know, we were never short of boots or extra kit if we needed it. And I still speak to Vic now, now and again, you know, and he, he had a big influence on my career.
at the time at Arsenal, we'd sign new players. I was the youngest and I felt like I was being left out because I was the youngest rather than deserving so. And my playing opportunities were limited. And I felt at that time in my career, I just wanted to play football. You don't get a long time to play and I wanted to play. And I went to Charlton because Keith Bonus was there and I knew he was an exceptional coach. He believed in me. It was difficult leaving Arsenal, who were the champions at the time. We just won the treble, I think, off the back of a, a successful year. But for me, it was about playing, going there and, and being valued, really. And, and I felt like I got that with Keith and being part of something that we were building. We'd won FA Cups, we'd won League Cups. And it was actually two weeks after we'd played in the Cup final in 2007. We got a phone call from Keith to say that we knew the men had gone down. Um, that we would no longer had a team to play for and that the women's team was being disbanded. At that point, I was preparing for a World Cup, so I didn't have a team. So utter panic, if I'm honest, and quickly, how how do I get a new team? How do I get playing again? And, you know, it was then I decided I'd go back to Chelsea. Uh, I knew some players there. They were, uh, you know, a decent level as well. So it was about going back there and, and just playing again. Really difficult to have a full-time job because, you know, I had various jobs, even working for the club. So I worked at Charlton. I was a coach for the academy. I coached the under 10s, 12s, 16s, whoever needed coaching. I was a personal trainer for a while as well because I knew that I could fit that around my playing career. I was worked in a gym, but then I'd have to work six days a week to try and get the Sundays off. And some of my shifts were like two till 10. The next day I'd have to be up early to open so that I could go to training in the evenings. Then I was fortunate I got a job at the Beckham Academy, full-time coaching, absolutely loved it. And I saw it as a real bonus because it meant that I had access to two full-size pitches. So when I was preparing for 2007 World Cup, I'd get up at five, I'd drive around the M25, get to the Beckham Academy, I'd train on my own. I was determined to make sure I was in the team, having been part of a European squad in 2005, not played a minute, that I was gonna get myself in the team and I knew that Whatever else, maybe I wasn't the most talented, but I'll outwork everybody because I had that mentality. Um, and it was the fittest I'd ever been, training on my own in those two pitches with rebound balls, access to balls, and, and making sure that I, I did the right things. Then I would get in the car, drive to training from 8 till 10 at night, and then I'd repeat the same again the next day. You know, we only trained twice a week with Chelsea, sometimes three times a week, played at the weekend. So I knew those extra bits that I was doing would really count. It wasn't easy. Um, I had many conversations with my mum at the time. She was like, you're going to kill yourself doing this. You're going to burn out. But I knew that I wanted to go to the World Cup prepared without any regrets. And I knew that that was in my control was the physical element. Um, so I watched games. I analysed games. I watched positions. I watched the opposition. I, I was quite analytical in my approach because I wasn't quick. So I needed to know what does a forward want to drop in? Does she want to go behind left footed, right footed? What are her trends? What are her strengths? How can I anticipate quicker? So I did a lot of that and it was tough, really tough. Um, I had to take unpaid leave to go to a World Cup for six weeks. So that was tough as well. I think that was one of the toughest things when we went to a World Cup, whether it was 2007 or 2009 Euros, we got to final or 2011 and you land back and you've got to go straight back to work. Emotionally, that's really tough when you spend that amount of time doing it full time, being with your teammates, having a structure, and then you're going back to work. And then, yeah, the reason I left Chelsea was because I wanted to have a shot at being professional. I'd never, I'd never been able to dedicate my life just to football. So when Lincoln came in and gave me that opportunity, they might have been a smaller name, they might have been, you know, a team that maybe weren't going to be as necessarily as competitive. But just to have the ability to say this is my job and I can do it full time and I can dedicate my life to it. Um, that's why I made the move. Well, we had a manager at the time who parted company with the club and then I got a phone call from, I think it was our then press officer who kind of acted as our chairman. We had we didn't have any staff. We barely had a physio, had no coaches, no goalkeeper coach, pretty much just the manager. I think we had a part-time goalkeeper coach who was working at the time. So I got a phone call on a Friday night. We had a game on Sunday against Lincoln, believe it or not, in the cup. And it was just basically, you're taking over. It wasn't a choice. It wasn't an option. And I felt a huge responsibility then to make sure the team were prepared, to make sure that we knew what we were doing, that we had, you know, the right tools in place. And I had big players in my team at that point, Leanne Sanderson, Anita Asante, Anita Luko. I was captain of the team. The first thing I did was give the captaincy to somebody else because I felt that was not responsibility I needed at the time. The difficult part was trying to coach a team 
when you're in it. I didn't have anybody else to coach. So when you're doing back four defending crosses and I'm in it, I'm like, this is really difficult. So there were times when I would, again, get up early, go and train first, then take the team in the evenings, but not necessarily train myself because I had a coach and that was impossible. And I was running the Chelsea Ladies Academy at the time as well. So I was doing all the young players. So some players I was coaching in the daytime and then they were training with us in the evening. So there was that dynamic too. It was a huge, steep learning curve for me. Uh, but one I really value now as part of my, my coaching journey, my coaching career. At the time, it was it was a no-brainer for me. Lincoln were going to move to Notts County. I didn't want to move to Notts County in terms of that team. Shelley Kerr was the manager at the time. I played against Shelley quite a few times in, in, in previous years. And she came and was like, do you want to come back to Arsenal? They were successful, they had a good setup. We, again, weren't full-time at that point, so I almost went full-time back to part-time. We trained three nights or four nights a week um, after the boys had vacated the training ground. Um, but just to go back there, be part of Arsenal and a club that I, I really enjoyed playing for um, was a good opportunity for me. And then we evolved into a full-time team quite quickly there, so that was a positive. I think the, the 2016 FA Cup was a real highlight for me. The fact that it was at Wembley. I'd been to so many men's cup finals, I watched, and I never ever dreamed that we'd play there, that we could walk the steps there. I know I played there in 2012 with the Olympics, but to play there of Arsenal and go into that game as underdogs, because Chelsea were the favorites to win. Um, but there was just something in our dressing room that day that told me and us that we were gonna go out there and we were gonna get the job done. And I felt it was one of my better games in my career. I thought I defended very well that day. I also had an assist for the goal. But I thought we just, we we stuck together, we won it, we ground it out. We probably could have won by more in the end. Um, but that was a real, I remember savouring that moment, walking up the steps. And it's quite a long walk when you've played and Wembley's quite a big pitch. And But I remember just walking up and I'm not a person that high fives fans or revels in those moments, but I was like, I'm never going to get this again. I knew I was coming towards the end. And I just absolutely loved every minute of it. My kids were there too, so I could share the moment with them on, uh, on the turf. And yeah, it was just, it was incredible. I've been asked this question about what it will look like in five or 10 years so many times throughout my career. And in 2015, I would never have thought it is where it is now. It's evolved so quickly. You look at the, the league now being on Sky Sports, on BBC, the visibility is going to keep growing. We just need to make sure I've got a responsibility as a head coach to make sure the advert on the pitch is good. You know, the professional game is brilliant now in, in, in England. You know, hopefully there'll be professional leagues across the world in all countries. But in this country, I would like to see stadiums full. Attendance is a lot higher. The quality of the game increasing. And I'd love to see an England team with a World Cup success.